Want to know the roadmap to zero manual testing, leveraging automation? What are the four main destroyers of any test automation effort? And what are some of the new features in the latest Playwright release? Find out on this episode of the Test Field News Show for the week of August 13th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. But first, are you looking to take your automation projects to the next level? Look no further than Atli Tools and the Visual AI Validation Testing. Trust me, it is a game changer. Plus, you can try it out for yourself by creating a free account now by clicking the link in the comment down below and see the difference for yourself. So a few weeks on my podcast, I had Jonathan Wright join us. He is a chief technology evangelist at Keysights. And we went over a whole bunch of things on how to move from manual to automation. And he gave a lot of insights in that podcast, but you couldn't see a lot of it. So he told me about a webinar that I actually want to do that covers a roadmap to go from manual to automation testing. For example, the latest release of eggplant tests, I'm going to show how it can automate 75% of your regression testing, eliminating the challenges of complex, time-consuming manual testing. So in this webinar, you're going to learn all the innovations of eggplant, also some special techniques you can use regardless of what testing you're doing. For example, they're going to go over how to test using any of the 700 combinations of iOS and Android devices in their operation systems, eliminating the need to manage physical devices. They're also going to go over enabling effortless collaboration, version control, and continuous integration features with seamless Git integration to ensure efficient management and tracking of test assets across enterprise teams. You also learn how to automate testing for virtual desktops using Keysight's Eggplant Intelligent Computer Vision to test Citrix workspaces securely, reducing test case complexity and risk. And you're also going to hear from their awesome team of experts as they discuss the latest in mobile application testing and continuous testing technologies. We're going to have Marcus Merrill from Sauce Lab sharing his wisdom. We have Ethan Chung, Hamza and Anna McCowan to help lead the way on new innovations in this space. You definitely don't want to miss this webinar and check it out in that first link down below. Hope to see you there. So how do you handle testing in a fast-paced world of continuous integration and continuous deployment? Well, I have a great article for you by Wayne Roseberry. Wayne is one of the go-to folks I always follow on LinkedIn. He always has a lot of insights, not only in the posts he posts on LinkedIn, but also that he comments on others. And here's the latest from him on an article he wrote on, Did My Recent Change Break Something? So in this article, Wayne emphasizes that in CICD, the primary query isn't whether the product works or meets requirements, but if the recent changes disrupted a previous working element. And to address this, He advocates for rerunning tests. By doing so, developers can statistically determine the probability of their change causing an issue. If a test fails consistently, the recent change is likely the culprit. However, if the failure is inconsistent, the defect may have been present before. Wayne also stresses that while rerunning can pinpoint the source of a problem, they also highlight that something is indeed broken, urging developers to investigate and rectify it. In essence, rerunning tests isn't about ignoring issues, but about understanding and addressing them effectively. And this article shows you how to do just that. So thank you, Wayne, for this awesome resource. Want to know how to make your player reports more readable? Well, this next article will help you do just that. So in this recent article by Andreas Worm, he delves into the intricacies of refactoring playwright tests to produce more readable reports. So this article goes over a four-step process to help you do this. The first one is structuring test scripts using test.describe, refactoring duplicate code into step methods, and employing test.step for human-readable step definitions. And then finally, implementing a minimal screenplay approach to synchronize step descriptions with their actual implementation. And this approach not only streamlines the testing process, but it also ensures that the reporting mirrors the source code, making it a whole bunch easier to pinpoint issues and enhances readability for users. And for those interested, a detailed example is available on GitHub that showcases the evolution from a basic script to the screenplay pattern. So with automation, we have different challenges between mobile and web. So what are some challenges you may face with mobile testing? Well, this next article goes over a few of them as well. And this article by Ben Dowen goes over while web applications can run on a ton of devices from gaming consoles to PCs, mobile apps are tailored for specific platforms like Android and iOS, spanning phones, tablets, and smartwatches, making it a lot difficult than just a web app. And this makes testing on actual mobile devices crucial for authentic user experiences, even though it might cost more to test on these different devices. In terms of automation, web testing has matured with tools often centered around Selenium, 
and web driver protocols. Mobile testing, however, is a bit more intricate, relying on accessibility labels or types for element locators, with Appium emerging as a prominent tool. And this article just goes into detail about all these differences and how, what you can do to stay ahead while you're doing mobile testing to make sure you're paying attention to these crucial areas as well. Have you seen the latest version of Playwright? If not, let's go over it really quick. This is actually a great video they do for every new uh, release that you should definitely check out, but I'll just summarize it really quick for you before you look at the video that I'll have down below. The latest release version 1.37 has a new tool called Merge Reports, which is a CLI tool. It works basically by if a test runs on multiple shards, users can now consolidate all reports into a single HTML report. And it works with a blob reporter that is added to the config, producing a zip file with test run details. And these blob reports can then be merged using the merge.report tool. It also has some UI mode updates, protecting dependencies, allowing users to control which dependencies to consider. And additionally, console logs from the test are now visible in the console tab. It also supports new browser versions. And also includes some releases from version 1.362 and 1.361. And you can find this all in that video that I'll have a link for down below in that first comment. So what helps with developer productivity? If you're an automation engineer, we call ourselves developers as well. So this applies to you also and your team. And here's some tips that Elastian has found that I think you're going to find helpful as well. So in this article by Elastian, the key to unlocking developer productivity Rajiv Rajan, Alassian CTO, reflects on the poetic beauty of well-written code and emphasizes that the true essence of productivity lies in the joy of the development process. And the key takeaways he's found from Alassian's approach is joy unlocking productivity. So Alassian believes that a joyful coding experience leads to heightened productivity, eliminating friction, and ensuring developers work in a state of flow which is pivotal. And that's why a lot of times when people choose automation tools, they should probably choose the tools that work best for their teams and their environment. And this will lead to more productivity and joy. It also has, as the second point, three pillars of developer joy. First one is awesome tools. So the company invests in tools that reduce cycle times for deployment and pull requests. They've introduced automation, migrating to new tools and new test libraries and develop Compass, a platform that catalogs all software components for easy accessibility. They also empower teams, so developers are given more control over their roadmaps and are encouraged to allocate 10% of their time addressing issues that hinder their daily task. And the third one is amazing engineering culture. So they foster a culture that really values clean code and ownership mindset and strong agile practices. Once again, these three pillars also would apply to anything to do with automation testing or automation testing effort. The third takeaway is measurable outcomes. So developer satisfaction scores at Alassian has risen from below 50% to a projected 71% by September, showcasing the success of their approach. Are you struggling with four of the main automation destroyers I've heard about? And I've taken four of the main top themes that kill most automation projects. And I created a video all about it. And you can check it out on my YouTube channel. It's called the four automation destroyers. The first one is not having a proper locator strategy. The second one is synchronization. The third is not having proper test data. And the fourth is having improper or not sufficient environments to run your test. And this video goes over these four destroyers and ways that you can improve as well. And if you haven't already, Why not like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss another episode? Check it out. Let me know what you think. And last up, we have a follow the money segment with Rootly, a trailblazing enterprise grade incident report management solution has raised 12 million in a series A round funding effort recently. So if you don't know, Rootly's platform is designed to expedite incident resolution by staggering 80% according to them. And it integrates advanced features like coordinated responses via Slack, suggesting guiding next steps and leveraging Gen AI to identify related incidents and generate postmortems. Okay, for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head on over to the first links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools, free account offer, and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. The mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full stack Pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.